Okay, and it's time to get our sweet corn planted. Now, if you followed us very much on the video series here, you know that we're not and have not had very much success growing sweet corn for a variety of different reasons. So what we have attempted to do is we decided last fall that this bed here, this 45 square foot bed, was going to be the designated growing space for sweet corn come this year. So last year, in addition to this spring, we've put about 80 pounds of used coffee grounds on the bed. And last year, we also mulched this bed extremely heavy with leaves. At this point, we've removed the leaves back. We've weeded any and unnecessary weeds that were in the bed. We applied some fertilizer. Now, what we did here was to put as much nutrients in the soil as we possibly could. This is not something that you would necessarily have to do based on your soil, your growing conditions. But what we did, we combined four different varieties of fertilizer, blood mill, bone mill, some 755, and some potato fertilizer. We mathematically calculated the applicational rates combined with what 45 square feet would, it, uh, would be needed, and we dispersed it on the bed here. So what the end result is on that MPK is approximately, give or take a few numbers, a 31, 17, 14 in that range. We know the nitrogen is going to be in the upper 20s. The potassium and phosphates are going to be in the mid-teens. Now this may be very excessive, but this is what we're going to do. This is an experimental bed. We're going to figure out how to grow sweet corn one way or another. In addition to the 80 pounds of compost, we also included six cubic or six square feet of certified leaf compost last year. In addition, we're going to add another three cubic feet approximately on this bed and work it and just uh, smooth it around, level it out. So what we're, the intent is, I need my rake, is last year in this bed we had leaks that we had moved over because we didn't have a good stand up. And on this side of the bed we had grown corn. Now the corn was not terrible in structure and, and stalk wise. The ears were small and we didn't really get any ears at all. Now one could be, one is the number of plants we had. We didn't have a very large block. You want to have a, a tremendous amount of plants so the tassels can pollinate the hairs on the ear. So what we have done and the, the, the consensus between uh, Holly and myself is we're going to add as much nutrients to the soil as possible. So if we have stalks that are 12 feet tall, the chances are, and we're going to make sure we get good pollination, the stronger the stalk or any plant, the stronger the plant, the better results the fruit production will be. So that's the uh, the, in the, consultant, the consensus behind that, that we're going to, one way or another, get very large and very healthy corn stalks, ears, and kernels on that ear, on those ears, will be determined. So, just going to spread this out. We've added so much nutrients to this bed. What we're planting is Silver, Silver King Hybrid corn, just in regular, ordinary, non-GMO corn. We're going to do it on 12 inch rows and the spacing of the, the kernels is going to be 9 inches. Now in big ag industry, your, your spacing on your row, the planter is somewhere between 16 and 24 inches, somewhere in that range, I'm not quite. Uh, remember quite correctly, but I do know the spacing on the seeds are between seven and nine inches. So we're going to go nine inches in this bed. That's going to give us 10 rows, nine inches. Uh, the bed's about four and a half foot wide. We're going to get somewhere between about 60 kernels or 60 stalks of corn, give or take a few. So we're just going to start and I'm not going to mark, I mean, I'm not going to put little row markers where each one of these rows is going to be. But what I will do is I'm going to come off the edge here and start right here. Now corn wants to be planted or likes to be planted in two, uh, two key elements. Corn 
needs to be planted in soil that is between 50 and 60 degrees minimal temperature. Ideally 55 degrees, two inches down, and six inches down at 50 degrees. This soil that we're working with now is approximately 55 to 63 degrees based on the different locations that we test it. So we're safe on that. If it's too cold, the corn kernels will just rot in the soil. You can pre-soak these kernels as well to accelerate the planting. Now last year we started these in containers and transplanted them out. We feel it's just going to be easier to direct sow them. You also want to plant these about an inch and a half deep is where you want to go with your corn planting. So we're going to go nine inch, got our measuring block here, going to go nine inches. And it's very easy to do. Nothing too scientific about it. The only advantage that you would have in pre-starting your seeds in containers would be you would know every seed has, when it came up, you know it was good. With this particular uh, direct sowing, just like anything, we're not certain if all of these seeds are gonna germinate. And these will take about seven to 14 days to mature. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all these planted and then we will come back and cover them up and get them watered in and finish the procedure here of getting our sweet corn bed planted in the hopes that what we have done, the preparations we have prepared this bed, that we're gonna have a different result that we, than we have in years past. All right, so I ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows at six seeds per row, which is 48. So that's not bad with a spacing of one foot centers, one foot between each row. So now I'm just going to cover them gently over. Soil is very, very moist, so I'm not going to water these seeds any more than what they already are. But what I will do is take the leaves that we had pulled off the bed and just throw them beside the rows that I planted just to hold the moisture in. And then once the seedlings have emerged, we can bring some grass clippings in. We can also bring some leaves that we still have stored up, shredded leaves, bring in and mulch this in to hold that moisture, retain that moisture. The weeds, we really haven't had an issue. We mulched heavy last year, like I spoke about, and that really held the weeds down. But since we've agitated the soil, that's gonna introduce some seeds to the light. So we'll have to deal with that very minimal amount and we'll mulch this in real heavy. So again, 55 degrees to 60 degrees, really ideal temperature for consistent temperature for corn. You can get it down 50 degrees, 55 degrees at two inches, 50 degrees at six inches. Corn usually will take, based on your variety, 60 to 95 days. So keep that in mind and you want to plant it in a block, not a single row. You want to have multiple rows so the tassels pollinate the ears that the hairs, the follicle hairs on the ears, each one of those is associated with a kernel that will form if it's pollinated. So this is our sweet corn patch. You've seen us if you follow the program. We've intensely built the soil up here. Last, uh, last summer at this time, we, didn't, we, we harvested the leeks that were here. We had corn in this bed, and I know that's a no-no to have corn or the same crop over and over in one location. But here's what we did. We couldn't get corn to grow. We couldn't get corn to produce ears. We could get corn to grow, but the corn was about the size of maybe the smallest finger on your hand. Very small stalks in, in structure. Corn is a heavy feeder of nitrogen. So what we had to do was we reevaluated our soil situation here, and we began to build the soil up. We put uh, 40 pounds of coffee grounds, which is, has some nitrogen in it. We worked that in the soil last fall. We put about uh, nine cubic feet of certified leaf compost from Sue's in this bed, worked it in last fall. And then we covered it with about a foot of shredded leaves that we, per we got off the property here and let it set. So come this spring, when the, the soil temperature was 50 degrees, two inches down, uh, 55 degrees, two inches down and 50 degrees Fahrenheit, six inches down, we went ahead and planted our Silver Queen hybrid corn from Dollar Seed. Prior to planting it now, we could just plant it and have been done. 
prior to planting it, we went ahead and added a lot of fertilizer, organic fertilizer, to the soil, to the bed. We had a combination of multiple bags of organic fertilizer to a MPK of approximately, I think it was like 31, 24, 19, something in that area. An incredible high number. But in combination with all of that, we were able to grow, and as you see, relatively decent sweet corn. Now, some of you have never had a problem with growing sweet corn. We have had problems growing it for four years now and finally have figured out the, the combination to get it to grow. So we can't harvest, we, we've harvested, uh, I think, eight ears off of this, this bed already. Very good ears. Now, some of this is not ready to harvest. This here has got silks, or the hairs, are still not dry. And the, the kernels, every hair goes to a kernel. So that is not yet uh, ready to go. Now, you want to do this in a block, first of all, because the pollen falls from the tassels here onto the ears or onto the hairs, which pollinates each kernel. Now, prior to harvesting, you want to make sure your hairs are dry, like a dry, ha dry hair. And not just on the appearance on the outside. You want to peel this back a little bit and also see how the hairs are drying. This one here is ready to go. So we'll go ahead and pull this one back and see what it looks like. Now look at that. That is a beautiful ear of Silver Queen sweet corn that we were able to grow ourselves. Now there's one more ear ready to go there and then there's about four or five that still need a couple of weeks. Now you always want to test, pull back a little bit of the husk and test. Test. You can puncture a kernel and if it's a milky substance it's ready to go. If it you, you, even if you think it's not, even if you think it's ready to go, you want to wait because it's still filling in these ears with the, the moisture and the nutrients that the plant's taking up. That is something that we are extremely pleased and honored to have come out of our garden at the, the, the amount of work that we have put in to trying to grow sweet corn. So what we're going to do is at the end of the growing season, we're going to go ahead and pull or cut these off, maybe use them for fall decorations rebuild the soil just like we did last year and put it in the same spot. I know that's not what's recommended by the books or by other gardeners, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to add more coffee grounds, more compost, and then more fertilizer at the time of planting next year with the expectations of having not just this, but better ears of corn. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.